Let's start with the, the news that's come in in the last hour or so in terms of that, that alert level. So we had been seeing the rate of infection going up, the number of cases going up. So no real surprise that, that indeed the alert level has also changed. Well, no, I think we've been seeing this for quite a long time. And obviously, as cases have gone up, uh, you know, the government has tried to allow uh, this loosening of restrictions. And one way they've done this is that sort of whack-a-mole strategy, where instead of having a national lockdown, you look and see where the cases are and then impose local uh, restrictions. But of course, what's happened with the commercial NHS test and trace system is that actually it's been overwhelmed. And the problem is we don't really know where the cases are at the moment. So we can't really whack, play whack-a-mole because we just don't know where the moles are. Duncan, do you think that's a fair point? Because uh, indeed, there has been a lot of pressure on test and tracing, and, and there definitely is that urgency to get it right. However, when it does come to the how many people we have been testing, we're doing better than some actually European countries. Well, of course, you can always uh, look at so you know how many tests we do. But one reason for the demand in tests is, of course, the number of cases that are out there. So as the virus spreads, you need more and more. Uh, tests and therefore you need uh, more capacity. So what perhaps could have been done is to allow test and trace to work properly for everyone to get their tests back within 24 hours and that would have allowed the economy to progress but also would have prevented the spread of the virus. OK, Simon, um, let's take a look at what was said by Sir Patrick Valance and um, Chris Whitty earlier on today in terms of uh, the trajectory, what we they potentially we could be seeing here in the UK in terms of the number of cases. They were largely looking at France and Spain, looking at basing the trajectory on that. Is, is that quite accurate? What's been going on there that's getting them quite worried here? Well, that curve you saw in, in the piece earlier actually was based on a doubling rate, given the doubling rate we have at the moment, given over time, over the next month, six weeks, what sort of numbers we will get to if the doubling rate is every seven or eight days, which it currently is. Back in the spring, back in March, it was quicker than that. You'd see that uh, that graph tick up quicker. So I don't think it's based on France. It's based on what's happening in the UK. But what's happening in France and in Spain is instructive because it tells us what could happen. Uh, so then, uh, Duncan, in, in terms of what kind of restrictions we could be seeing here, what do you think would be most effective? A, a curfew, um, a lockdown, but allowing people maybe to go to work and school? Well, that's a political uh, answer you need for that. What the government, what the scientists did today, the chief um, scientific advisor and the chief medical officer, is they set out the science. So they set out this is what the science is. They also published a report by the Academy of Medical Sciences on the 14th of July, a couple of months ago, saying this is what the science is. And now that's the decision for the government to take tomorrow to decide how much you want to use the science in your strategy and how much you want to take into other, other factors, for example, the economy. And it's a very difficult balancing act the government has.